one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to uh, begin the meeting with a moment of silence. And obviously, we should have in our thoughts and prayers the victims uh, and, the fa and their families uh, uh, in Brussels. to announce that the meeting is being recorded and televised by the local cable company. And I'd like a motion to approve bill and payroll warrants. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like a motion to accept correspondence in the read file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public forum, now is the time for anybody to speak who, uh, who would like, who is here, who would like to speak on something that's not on the agenda. If there is anyone here. Approval of meeting minutes, open session, February 23rd, 2016. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Abstain. One abstention. No. Good. At least it passed, Danny. Uh, it has reached 7.05, but before we, we go to the public hearing, um, with respect to the application of British Farm, what I would like to do, uh, because the treasurer collector is here, I'd like to take that item first under new business, act on the town's participation in the Plymouth County OPEB Trust Program, acronym PCOT, and I believe Lisa is going to read a, Make a motion. A motion. <clears throat> Whereas the town of Whitman, the town, has accepted the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20, and whereas Plymouth County sponsors the Plymouth County OPEB Trust Program, PCOT, and whereas the town is eligible to participate in PCOT, a program designated for, to fund post-employment benefits for its employees as specified in the town's policy and or applicable collective bargaining agreements, and whereas it is determined to be in the best interest of the town to adopt the public agency's post-retirement Health Care Plan Trust, the tax-exempt trust performing an essential governmental function within the meaning of Section 115 of the Internal Revenue Code as amended and the relevant statutory provisions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and whereas the town's adoption and operation of the program has no effect on any current or former employee's entitlement to post-employment benefits, and whereas the terms and conditions of post-employment benefit entitlement, if any, are governed by contracts separate from and independent of the program, and whereas the town's funding of the program does not and is not intended to create any new vested right to any benefit nor strengthen any existing vested right, and whereas the town reserves the right to make contributions, if any, to the program. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen Board hereby approves participating in the Plymouth County OPEB Trust Program, PCOT, and the Board hereby adopts the public agency's post-retirement <coughs> health care plan trust, including the public agency's post-retirement health care plan, effective March 22, 2016, the trust, and the board hereby appoints the treasurer and his or her successor or his or her designee <clears throat> as the town's plan administrator for the trust. The plan administrator shall act on behalf of the town in all matters relating to the town's participation in the trust, including but not limited to authorizing the investment of assets in Peacock's investment pool, providing directions to the trustee and or the trust administrator, and authorizing contributions and disbursements from the town's trust assets. And the board hereby appoints the Peacock Investment Committee for the oversight of investments, and the town's plans administrator is hereby authorized to execute the legal and administrative documents 
on behalf of the town and to take whatever additional actions are necessary to maintain the town's participation in the trust and to maintain compliance of any relevant regulations issued or as may be issued. Is there a second? Second. Is there, are there any questions or would you like to say anything? Mr. Chairman, yes. the uh, reason this is presented in, is our Financial Officers Committee uh, has been reviewing options for investing uh, OPEB money over a long period of time uh, because of the nature of the uh, purpose of the funds. This gives us an opportunity to utilize PCOT to get long-term results rather than trying to invest from year to year. And your vote and signature authorizes Mayor Beth to discharge her duties as treasurer. That's it. Okay. Um, any questions? All yeah, those in favor? Right here. All in favor, Aye. yeah. Aye. Okay. Absolutely. And now we need to sign in front of you. And then Dawn will notarize. Do we have an original? Or can I just yeah. use this one right here? It should be in the folder, but okay. either one of them can be an original. I need a signed copy. Well, After you're done. Do yeah. I thought Mary Beth should get up and speak. <laughs> All her glasses. Is there another copy we have to sign? We have to sign one no, or two. Just we only one. need one. Okay. Would be one executed copy. They'll go downstairs, execute it with Dawn, and it'll be all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tom. See you. Okay. See you at the next meeting. Are you going to take uh, Yeah, I tell you, yeah, I tell you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take two other quick items out of order also. Uh, I'd like to act on the request of Michael Gansher on behalf of Whitman and Hanson Dollars for Scholars to erect a fundraising thermometer in the town hall lawn from the beginning of April through the end of May. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Lyso also would like to act on the request of Michael Ganchard on behalf of Whitman and Hanson Dollars for Scholars to declare the month of April as Dollar for Scholars Month. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Mike, you can get back Mike. down to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Go to work. <clears throat> okay, now it's, we, it's, it's past 7.05, but it's time to open a public hearing. Uh, with respect to the application of Ritter Farm <coughs> Incorporated into a business as Ritter Farm Learning Center and Ritter Farm Golf Course, Janelle Rotondi, manager. For a Chapter 12 general on-premises wine and malt license on the premises located at 322 Oak Street, East Bridgewater, Mass, OT333. The license will be for portions of the Ritter Farm Golf Course that are located in the town of Whitman. Specifically holds 4, 12, 13, 14, and 16 subject to receipt of the license, mailing, and advertising fees, and approval of the ABCC. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. This brings up a whole lot of pictures in my mind of what's going on on, on holes 4, 12, 13, 14, and 16. Happy golf but, carts. <laughs> but we, we, we see an attorney McCarthy is here to, um, to represent Ritters. And you know we're also from Ritter? Yes. Would you like to say anything? Oh, unless you had any questions. No. Okay. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? <laughs> I think it sounds like a sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Actually, no, that's fine. All right, he's the golfer. Yeah, that means You're I can drink on holes four, drinker. twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And <laughs> no way. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye, Aye. absolutely. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very okay. much. Yep. Good to see you, Al. Yep. Uh, 7.15, close enough to 7.15, a public meeting with respect to the application of Ricard D'Ambrosio doing business as Gallery 18 auctions for an auctioneer license on the premises located at 605 Bedford Street. Is Mr. D'Ambrosio here? Hi. And what would you like to say? This time... I'm going to run an auction on Wednesdays and Saturday nights. We sell uh, new uh, merchandise from the stores, overstocks, and you know, closeouts. And okay. 
And uh, apparently he's attracted my son and daughter-in-law to a shop down in, is it West Bridgewater? I was in West Bridgewater, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, I knew years nothing about Bridgewater. him, but David said, I know those people. <laughs> I'm looking for a better location, actually. Well, that <laughs> that is a good location. The equipment's going to be a much better location than I was in West Well, I like, this. I like the sound of that. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Frank, is this some of the, uh, the business that uh, Brian had some concerns about? No. Uh, this is going to be located on the corner of Glen and Bedford in the uh, area that Mr. Rosen is constructing those... Uh, open buildings in. The only subject for the, the only condition on the uh, motion should be to, uh, it is subject to a occupancy permit, which they are working on right now. Okay. Okay, with that addition to it, into my motion. Okay, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Thank good you. luck. Thanks. Good luck. Welcome to Whitney. <laughs> Okay, before we do the uh, next public meeting at 720, uh, we can vote to ratify the Memorandum of Agreement with the Office of Professional Employees International Union. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Frank, do you want to say anything yes, about that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the uh, vote here is to ratify an agreement that extends the Town Hall Collective Bargaining Agreement one additional year. The agreement was reopened to address some language questions and concerns that the union and the town had over administrative process. We have addressed those in the consideration of reopening. We also added one additional year to the contract, and that year will be from July 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2018, and the uh, agreed on increase for that period will be two and a half percent. The uh, Memorandum and, and previous contracts assigned, and a new contract will be drawn up once ratified. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. After on the request of Town Clerk Don Varley to reappoint Alice Riddle to the position of Registrar of Voters for a three year term through March 31st, 2019. So moved. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Discuss the smoke shop, 27 South Avenue, selling Kino to go. A vote is not required if there is no objection by the board. Is there any objection None by the board? None whatsoever. None. Nope. There's a smoke shop to do Kino. Okay, fine. Then that's done. Act on the request of the Whitman Recreation Commission for an expenditure in the amount of $3,200 from the World War II Memorial Field Fund in order to replace the fence around the basketball pickleball court located behind the police station. Is there a motion? So moved. A second. second. Yes, second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Go pickleball. Act on the resolution calling for full funding of the Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, Frank, would you like to go through this? Sure. The, uh, you have in your packet a resolution which is drawn up by the uh, foundation and who has been very active by the way in seeking additional commitment from the state for school funding yes I'll turn the mic uh, <laughs> the <coughs> the governor's uh, budget as outlined in here only increases chapter 70 by 1.6 percent but it doesn't identify the systemic underfunding resulting from uncontrolled, in, un, increasing unrestricted general government costs. Uh, this resolution recognizes that those costs effectively reduce the amount of aid received from year to year over the previous year, and we hopefully will be joining other communities in a voice to say we need relief the state needs to step up and meet its commitments to education and by voting this resolution we'll join our voice to the group and the towns that will be joining or the, the boards of selectmen that will be joining so far are from Arlington, Douglas, Groton, Harvard, Lunenburg, Northbridge, North Reading, Oxford, Warren, West Brookfield, 
Ashland, Lunenburg, Northbridge, North Reading, Oxford, Walpole, and West Brookfield. And then there are a number of school committees that have also been, uh, um, and uh, that have also endorsed this, including Southeastern Regional Votech. Yep. Is there any, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to discuss record storage in town hall. I see an article here. Yes. Yes, Frank. The, uh, you also have hopefully a little outline of what I'm looking to do. We have a huge, huge issue with record storage in the town hall. We have very few secure locations to place records and they're stored haphazardly throughout the building. What I am proposing is with the permission of the board to designate the space formerly occupied by the chief of police in the lower town hall and convert that into an expansion records room mm -hmm. for archive records for the clerk's office, the board of appeals, the planning board, um, and other departments that may need archive storage. In addition, I am seeking to add a rotating system in the selectman's office to enable us to increase our file storage and collect the records that are spread out throughout the town hall and properly identify and store them. It's a short-term solution. It'll probably address our needs for the next five to seven years, but uh, ultimately, we are going to have to move to some type of electronic document system in order right. to manage our resources. And Article 28 that's going to deal with this is asking the town to raise an appropriate yeah. uh, 39626 Correct. So my request to the board is twofold, to support the article and to authorize the use of that space, as I've defined. Okay. Is there a, a motion to authorize the space? And our, our endorsing of Article 28 will happen at town hall, at town meeting. Is there a motion to do that? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, Frank. Well, by using this area, that's closest to the lower town hall, right? The room. Correct. Closest There's a to door it. into that right. room. Yeah. That's why I picked that room. Oh, yep. Okay. Just wanted to know where it was. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Plan. Aye. Aye. Excellent. It's reached 7:20, so now it's time to have a. If I can find my, can I borrow this for a second? Easy Auto Works and Sales. Yeah, public meeting with respect to the application of Easy Auto Works and Sales, Incorporated, Gerson P. Masiel, to change the name of the business on the Class Two Auto Dealers License on the premises located at 956 Temple Street. Subject to the receipt of an updated surety bond, take action to rescind the Class 2 auto dealer's license for easy auto works and sales on the premises located at 956 Temple Street. This is basically a change of name. Um, it's actually a transition from a proprietorship to mm -hmm. a corporation. Okay. If approved, I have a note here that if approved, the Board of Selectmen should stipulate that the license will not be released until the... Um, Places in compliance. Correct. We have an what? issue with respect to the number of vehicles on site and the way they are laid out. I know Bob Curran has made a visit there, mm -hmm. and uh, we're asking that Mr. Marcel conform yep. to the layout that was approved by this office when the original mm -hmm. Class Two license was issued, in that he not exceed the number of authorized vehicles that in the uh, updated bond to reflect the new corporate name. Okay. Okay, is that? Have the okay. updated. Excellent. Is this, this is a copy, right? That's the original. Is it? It is original, yeah. And I'll acknowledge that we've received the surety. Okay, terrific. Mm -hmm. oh, and then just taking care of the uh, the matter of the number of cars. And I believe you've taken care of the cars. Yeah. Did he say by how, by how many? It's ten. Went went over by by how many? Four. Yeah, I'm On gonna. Display. I'm gonna have a talk with my son. Okay. <laughs> have All a right. talk. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> okay. uh, is there a motion? 
Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Yes, second. Any questions? Yeah, uh, Frank, is, is this the auto dealership that uh, I've received a phone call on the cars it's, encroaching? It's next to that one. Next to that one, okay. We'll talk about that later. We heard okay. about that. Thank you. <laughs> all Thank right. you. I'm all set here. Yeah. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good luck. Take care. Have, have, have a great night. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to vote to authorize deficit spending for demolition at 215 South Avenue. Frank? As you may recall, Mr. Kern came before the board a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, um, regarding the barn attached to 215 South Avenue. It was in, I want to say, imminent danger of collapse. Uh, the board voted to authorize Mr. Kern to seek a reserve fund transfer from the finance committee and then to contract for the work. The windstorm changed our plans. The uh, side on the south side of the barn actually fell uh, and the front side was hanging down. It became necessary to immediately remove the offending premise. Uh, Bob had at that point sought and received two bids for the work. Unfortunately, um, we weren't able to reach the first bidder, so we went to the second, uh, which happened to be uh, Ciccone. And they did come out immediately and take it down. The Assistant Town Administrator, Greg Enos, sought and received a waiver from bidding requirements from the Attorney General's office. The Finance Committee, however, has met and rejected the proposal uh, for a reserve fund transfer simply because they're concerned that at this point in the fiscal cycle, this would eat up 25 to 30 percent mm -hmm. of what's left in the fund, and they want to be properly prepared to address other issues that may come up where this board has already voted on the action. I'm now asking authorization to deficit spend. I will obtain permission and will place an article which I will add on to the warrant uh, to transfer money within this fiscal year so that we don't end up deficit spending. Okay. Is there a motion to authorize that? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Dan, any questions? Yes. Uh, Frank, um, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put the article on the special town meeting warrant. How do we do we recoup it at the sale of this house? Well, there, let's take the first piece. The reason I'm asking permission to deficit spend is I don't want to have to make this contract to wait until May to get paid. So your vote tonight will allow me to pay him with approval. The money will be, assuming we don't get paid, and I'm assuming we won't be paid by May 2nd, then yes, the money we raise will reduce that deficit spending. And then uh, once we've made this payment, we will place a lien on the property for the value of the demolition. So at some point in time, the town will receive payment either from payment by the taxpayer or by the sale of the property. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. To vote to authorize deficit spending. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to discuss the sewer agreement termination notice with the city of Brockton. Frank, do we, we okay, received Okay, I think that deserves an explanation. Yes, well, we deserve. So. We received a letter from uh, the mayor of Brockton, uh, Bill Carpenter, on March 16th, 2016. Um, might help if I read the letter to By all begin means. the discussion. It's addressed to ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Frank Lynham, Carl Kowalski, Lisa Green, Don Varley, Dan Savucci, Scott Lambiasi, Aaron Richardson, Superintendent, Water, Sewer, Town of Whitman, and Brian Bazanson. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the current agreement for wastewater services between the Town of Whitman and the City of Brockton expired on July 2nd, 2014. 2014. On July 24th, 2014, the City informed the Town of its inclination to limit negotiations to a reasonable period. 
Despite the passage of 21 months since the date of that notice, negotiations at this point have been unsuccessful. Accordingly, please accept this notice of termination of sewer services by the City of Brockton for the Town of Whitman, effective March 16, 2017. First time I read this, I thought it was March 16, 2016, and I ran home and flushed. I kind of freaked out, but okay. ran home and flushed your toilet. I wasn't ar I wasn't around this week, and I <coughs> whoa. The city agrees to negotiate with. I thought that was kind of short notice because the the letter was dated March 16, 2016. But that was my mistake. <coughs> the city agrees to negotiate with the town in good faith until the effective termination date, in the hopes that a mutually agreeable agreement can be reached. So it looks like we have a year to come to some sort of an agreement with Brockton about how we take care of our wastewater. In addition, the city makes a formal demand for payment of the uncontested portions of the FY 2013 bill, which remains outstanding, having been issued in October of 2015. Thank you for your attention to this matter. If you require anything further, please advise. Very truly yours, Bill Carpenter, Mayor, with a copy to our attorney, Matt Tobin. Well, a number of questions arise. You know, one of them is, why have we not paid a bill that goes back to FY 2013? Don't we, doesn't Whitman pay its bills on time? We pay them when they're properly delivered and when we are able to verify and make the payments. This, there's a long history here, and I'm going to try not to go too far back, but uh, we kind of hit a wall with Brockton in 2012. 2012? Yep. Okay. The, we were presented with a bill for a million three mm -hmm. for sewerage, and the bill was replete with errors. We held several meetings with the city of Brockton, we wound up hiring an auditor to actually go in and look at the bill. And I say 2012, it was, it was actually 2011. They bill us a year in, in arrears at the earliest. Mm -hmm. When we completed that audit, the bill shrunk to $387,000. So with a really large lack of confidence in the ability to rely on the bills we were getting. We have appointed uh, Melanson Heath as our auditor for sewer bills. It's frustrating because it cost us four to five thousand dollars to do these audits. But how it's many necessary. Have, and how many have we done? We've done two so far. So, so the first audit took two and a half years because we couldn't get Brockton to give us the documents. So we're paying eight thousand dollars over a four year period. Yes to try to understand how Brockton is charging us what it charges us. Yes. So, as a result of that audit and the final acceptance of that bill, we agreed on a process for future billing. The next bill was <clears throat> equally difficult to decipher and again took over a year to audit. And that was the FY 2012, okay. which was paid in 2014. In 2014... Well, we issued a bill from them on, in October of 2014? No. In July of 2014, okay. we were issued the FY13 bill. Okay. And we began auditing that. And once again... In we, July. But his letter says October of 2014. I think the... Pre it may have been October. Well, whatever. Yeah. In that time period. Okay. The bill was already a year and yep. some odd months old. And once again, we went back to audit, and once again, we found disagreement. Uh, we met several times because at this point, our contract with the city of Brockton expired, mm -hmm. and we had to establish a new agreement. We were unsuccessful in reaching terms that were agreeable to the town of Whitman for the last year and a half. Brockton's primary issue was they wanted the town of Whitman to become a common user. And it's important to understand what that means. When we built our sewer system, we became a co-applicant with the city of Brockton for use of their plant. Our agreement stipulated that our bill would be based on flow and whatever flow we have divided by the total flow in the plant would determine 
what our bill was as a percentage of the plant's operating cost. Okay. The exception to that was we were not responsible for any capital projects that resulted in expansion of use. Mm -hmm. So if they were building to add to the capacity, we weren't responsible for those. And that led to some of these problems in identifying what we were and weren't responsible for. Uh, when we last met several months ago, the city maintained that they wanted us to accept the common usage, common user provision, which means we, just as a resident living in the city of Brockton, would have the same liabilities to the sewer system. If a water main, if a sewer main in Brockton breaks, we have to pay our share to fix it. If a manhole has to be built, we have to pay our share. We absolutely disagree with that concept because we were not a common user. Uh, Brockton was unwilling to accept that and they drew a line in the sand. We met last week. We started the same way we started every meeting. You, we, we will insist you be a common user or we're not going to mm -hmm. agree to extend your contract. And at one point, I used the word continental divide to define our position and Brockton's position on this issue. We built a force main to deliver sewer effluent to the plant in Brockton. We built it through the city of Brockton. The only part of that pipe the city of Brockton owns is the last 160 feet. And that's what they use to maintain that we should be a common user. The difference between us and Abington is Abington's pipes end at the Brockton line on Route 123. So they are, in fact, a common right. user mm -hmm. in the sense that all of their effluent is delivered through Brockton's System. infrastructure. Uh, while they haven't... Did we offer to uh, uh, lay the 160 I did, actually. I said, that's no problem. Well, I'll have the 160 feet laid next month. And the attorney's response was, we won't grant you a permit. <laughs> I said, okay, then, then we're going to have difficulty reaching an agreement. And it was contentious for a while. Mm -hmm. And I understand what Brockton's issue is. They're looking at this as their citizens don't really have a clear understanding of what was involved in Whitman's connection to the system. Mm -hmm. We didn't go through this system. We went around it. We went right to the plant. And we're willing to pay our share of the plant cost. In our pending agreement, we're actually agreeing to accept a portion of the debt even for those... Uh, contracts that expand capacity because we recognize that in order to continue to serve us and serve others they may have to expand mm -hmm. from time to time we don't like it mm -hmm. but but that was our concession to the common user piece but we don't want to be responsible for their um, infrastructure that's a hundred years old and that absolutely not is ready to blow mains all over the place so we we uh, we've reached an understanding. I'm not going to say an agreement. We reached an understanding. Mm -hmm. We've had the bill redone. Uh, one of the things they were seeking to capture were uh, charges they failed to bill us in FY 9, 10, and 11. And when we signed our agreement or when we settled our FY 12 bill, mm -hmm. we agreed that it was in full settlement for all claims. Mm -hmm. And after a two and a half hour session, they finally agreed to that. So, to make a long story short, Thursday, I sent them a check for three hundred thousand dollars. In um, so, as far as anything they've billed us, we're up to date with figures well, that no, appear to be accurate. Well, no, we're going to need to transfer because we're not collecting enough money to pay those bills. Um, $212,000 in the special town meeting in May. They have not billed us for 14 or 15 because they were waiting to see what we did with 13 <laughs> because they wanted to bill 14 and 15 as common user charges. Oh, okay. okay. So <clears throat> now that we've agreed to get past that point, they're going to work at developing invoices for 14 and 15. Um, our contract also provides that we be given an estimate of what our costs will be each year so we can plan and appropriate. 
we have never received a bill for the previous year in time to budget in the present year to pay it as an unpaid bill. They've always come after the town meeting. So essentially, we're two town meetings behind when we get a bill. Mm -hmm. They're trying to fix that. And I know they've gone through hell there in the last few years with their system. So we're hoping that this will resolve things. Uh, once we receive those other bills, we'll plan appropriations from our uh, enterprise reserve to make those payments. We have some money put aside. We have 400000 put aside for FY14. We have 500000 put aside for FY15. And my best estimate is we're going to need another $600,000 to bridge that mm -hmm. two-year gap. Uh, we, I will be working with the superintendent uh, along with the finance committee to review rates and figure out what we need to do to properly fund this thing going forward so that we're never in this position again. But it has never been our unwillingness to attend to this bill. It's been the inability to reach agreement with Brockton on how to handle it. And I'm pleased to say that we came away from that meeting with a much better understanding okay. of where we're going. So there's been progress. So as far as I know, yeah. they're not yeah. going to shut us off next, next year, year because we now have a year in which to reach a new agreement and under any circumstance they would not have been able to simply disconnect the city the town of women from the city it's at, i think the mayor got perhaps a different perspective of what was happening than what we had in the room jay condon who's the cfo mm -hmm. was instrumental in finally resolving this in our last meeting oh, good. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't get emotional about these things, but I get frustrated sometimes sitting there and you feel like you're just flogging a dead horse. It's not going to move. And mm -hmm. They say that, we say that, we keep going back to the corners. And, okay, the definition of insanity, doing something again and again right. and expecting right. a different outcome. Different. Well, thanks for that uh, clarification. And uh, I'm resting easier now, <laughs> knowing that... Uh, It'll work. We, ha we have a year to work it out. We're still working with the same people. <coughs> so right. I won't hold my breath. Yeah, Frank, yeah. the pipe that we that Whitman owns, mm -hmm. that we put in, in the last, what, 100, <coughs> 150 feet, you say, is in Brockton, the city of Brockton? Yes, 160. Who, who, put, that, who put that pipe in? When we connected 25 years ago, Brockton insisted that they connect the final piece of the pipe to the sewer. <laughs> it's their system. So we ran our pipe right up to the plant, and then the last 150 feet were connected by Brockton. I assume because it and was I in understand Brockton. that because it's it was their Brockton. plant. Uh, it seems to me that Brockton's looking for another source of revenue. Well, that is part of it. Uh, certainly. The, the bills for Abington, since they signed their new contract, have gone up a couple of hundred thousand a year. Uh, our bills, by the way, are going up a couple of hundred thousand a year because we're going to be experiencing more and more maintenance costs right. along the way. Of our pipes. But part of the problem is yeah. we were not appropriating enough money, and the reason we weren't appropriating enough money is the DPW didn't have a benchmark to work from. No two bills in the last five we paid have been anything close to consistent. Next item on the agenda is the shared use of the building inspector's vehicle, Frank. I've discussed this with the uh, town administrator in Hanson. Our building commissioner serves in that same capacity mm. in Hanson. Mm. And right now, what we do is he drives in here, takes our vehicle, brings it back, then drives his vehicle to Hanson, drives their vehicle, then brings their vehicle back and goes home. So in a discussion with Mr. LeCamera, I said, look, you know, we provide him a vehicle. Uh, I'm not doing it for free. We're going to amortize. I'm going to recapitalize the vehicle, and then I'm going to amortize it out, mm -hmm. and we're going to pay our proportionate share based on usage. And with that, I would like to uh, reach an agreement with Hanson 
to share the vehicle uh, mm. costs. And that would include fuel and depreciation. Mm. And it would make life simpler for our building inspector. Uh, and I think it would work more effectively toward getting more production out of them because you're not wasting time running back and dropping off cars. Yeah, right. And the commute is de minimis. He, he, if you have a three wood, one wood, you can probably hit his house from here. Mm -hmm. Now, do we, um, do we have a, a town of Whitman seal on his vehicle? We on have the, the town vehicle. I think we do. We we do have would a marking have to, that says building. Would we have town of Hanson on one side and town of Whitman on the other? What I might do is put a little seal below it. Okay, I'm just talking off the top of my head. <laughs> But it's innocuous. It just says yeah. building inspectional right. services, right. so it'll fit right in. Yeah. Set the April meeting schedule. Any suggestions, folks? Yes. What I would like to do, if the board is amenable, <laughs> is have our first meeting, I believe it's April 6th. Mm -hmm. um, April what? 6th. No, April 5th. I'm Thank sorry. You. April right. 5th. I'm looking at it, right? April 5th. And at that meeting, I will ask the Board of Selectmen to sign the warrants and authorize that they be finalized and okay. posted okay. for town meeting. Uh, I'm, we are st <laughs> this has been a horrendous budget cycle. We have received $1.9 million in capital requests for this year. Um, if we were to approve the requests in place, we would be over the levy by one million nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. We're not going to do that. Right. So we're working with departments to try and come up with a plan that'll allow us to utilize perhaps eight hundred thousand from the money that we're receiving from National Grid under the personal property tax provision and then each year revisit what's available in that appropriation to plan out capital needs. It, it, they're just, they're amazing right now. Um, and I am continuing to edit the warrant long after I'd hoped to have a reasonably complete and ready to review warrant, but I hope to have one in two weeks. Um, and I will provide periodic updates to the board as, as we wean them down. So the next meeting will be the mm, 19th. 19th. Right. So 5th and 19th. Okay. Good. Old business, uh, personal policies and procedures, sections for discussion from sexual harassment through discipline. Um, we have received, cop I think Frank has given us copies of uh, the amended personnel policies and procedures. Remember we were asked for over the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks to which, suggest things to him. See which folder I have them in. No, I brought them up. I received, I did review information with Dan, with Scott, and with Carl. Um, Carl gave us some, that's the old one, right? Uh, changes, and the notable changes, if I can borrow one of those copies, Carl. That was the last one you gave me. Peg. Uh, the, most of the corrections were presentation, you know, proper usage of grammar where people got carried away with commas, when <laughs> for the formatting issue. And then in the sexual harassment policy and in the disciplinary policy, there were items that seemed inconsistent. One of them was a comment that a complaint um, 
would be heard by the Board of Selectmen, but no process for it. So the correction I made was that the complaint will be submitted to the town administrator, it will be reviewed and investigated, mm -hmm. and if found to have merit, mm -hmm. would then be referred to the Board of Selectmen for a hearing and determination. Okay. Uh, the other similar issue was in the sexual harassment policy where it wasn't clear. I will find it. How the follow through would go. Uh, it was easier when I had them in color. <laughs> in, in step two, I removed the language. If the complaint concerns a potential participate in investigation process, the individual should contact the chairman of the board of selectmen. It's out of place and makes no sense. Right. So what I inserted was if the complaint concerns the sexual harassment investigator, which is what I think it originally I, meant. I figured that's what it meant. Yeah. yeah then the individual should contact the chairman of the board mm -hmm. of selectmen so that they're not complaining to the person who may well be the person who's complaining about this. And the reason the town administrator is the person to come to is because it's presumed it's going to be a co-worker or department head and you want someone outside the chain of command. So I think that cleans that up. Um, the other change was in the investigator shall prepare a written summary of the investigation which shall include if applicable corrective or disciplinary actions. It said decided, I remove that and put recommended mm -hmm. and present those recommendations to the Board of Selectmen who shall conduct a hearing on the matter. Good. And then in the uh, hostile work environment, we had the, a situation with grievances that made no sense, so I just struck the paragraph yeah. mm -hmm. and I inserted, after a grievance, is, if a grievance is not resolved, it's through the chain of command it's presented to me. If it's presented to me, once agreement is referred to the town administrator and found to be valid, she, he shall take all necessary steps to resolve the grievance to the satisfaction of the grievant. If the town administrator lacks the ability, authority to resolve the grievance, then he shall present the matter to the Board of Selectmen for resolution. And the part I did delete it, just I deleted it because it made no sense. Mm -hmm. That's this section here. So I think what we have is a comp mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a a reasonable draft. We still have another third of it to go through. And once we've completed and accepted all of those reviewed changes, it will be sent to council for final review. So oh, terrific. And then I we'll get it one more time to vote on it. Right. And then we'll okay. vote what's been reviewed and okay, great. passed by council. So we will have, uh, we will have amended it Before once. the end of the fiscal year, we'll have a policy. We will have amended it once. The town council will have gone over it, and then we'll vote on it after that. Yes. So we still have a third of it to go. Right. And we will... Um, two weeks? In two weeks. So, with the, well, yeah, within a week. Yeah. Well... That's four weeks. We yeah, four weeks. We want to four get four weeks. weeks. So within a couple of weeks, we'll get to Frank. And then so on the April 19th will be the time that we actually look at it again. Right. Okay. And, you know, this has been Yeoman's work. Greg has done a, a really, uh, really good job of putting this stuff together. I mean, we've worked cooperatively, but he's done a lot of the legwork. And it's come from, we received a grant from Maya to do part of it. And we reached out to other communities, uh, notably Duxbury East, and, and there was a third uh, for parts of the policy that we brought together and what makes some type of cohesive sense. Once that's done, we'll then roll it out. We'll mm -hmm. have introductory meetings with the department heads mm -hmm. and present the policy and hear what comments they may have on a final policy and right. if it's necessary, okay. come back one more time. Yeah, Greg has done a lot of work at that. He's also done a lot of work on grants lately. Yeah. And it was my pleasure this evening to sign the um, standard contract form with the Mass with the Commonwealth of Mass that deals with the money that we're getting 
because we're a green committee, a green community. You did a lot of work. $167,000 this town is getting because of the work that Craig did in making sure that we satisfy the requirements of the Commonwealth to be designated as a green community. So. I'm sure if he never need, sees need another to, energy bill, he'll be Need happy. to acknowledge that, yeah. Um, last item on the agenda is to act on the rules and regulations and enforcement policy for the licensing of alcoholic beverage sales in the town of Whitman. This was something that we received a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and uh, up for a vote tonight, if I can have somebody... Uh, Make a motion. Make a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, rules and regulations uh, enforcement policy of licensing of alcohol beverage sales and in the town of Whitman. Is there a second? I will second. And this is, uh, you know, in, in our response, our responsible response to uh, the situation that occurred with uh, one of our local establishments uh, that we tried to discipline and found out that we weren't as in as good a position to discipline because we didn't have uh, rules and regulations and an enforcement policy well documented, and now it will be if we vote this. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions? Yes, Frank. And is there going to be a last page to this that each person who gets a license will sign it, just notifying that they have received that? Yes, and whether we get it back or not, I don't know because okay. we're not we're not going to be able to chase them. But every license will have that policy attached to it. Yeah. So okay. if they have their license. They have the policy, and we'll document that. Okay. This, again, is something where Greg has done a really good I job. And we also had assistance from the chief of police who's yeah. uh, taking a look at things to make sure that it all makes sense because as the li liquor enforcement agent, he's going to have a little more to do with this than, than we are from day to day, and hopefully we won't have to invoke the provisions yeah. of the... That was, a good, that was a good job. Another, another good job there. Okay. Any questions? Or all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I think that's it. Frank, do you have anything? Uh, One final thing. For the good of the cause? I have received, and I believe Dan has received, uh, and I know Scott has probably received calls regarding Alley Motors, located yep. at 934 Temple Street. Um, this is a place that things are so haphazard and spread around there. Uh, it's a bigger version of the issue we had on Route 18. Uh, Bob has been out there. Uh, they're over the number of vehicles. They don't have them properly laid out. And they have been notified. They, they have 69 vehicles on the lot uh, and an additional 12 in the rear. And their license is only 60. We've asked them to clean it up, to reorganize the layout of the lot. I think part of the reason the gentleman that was here earlier got a little dragged into this is because of the layout. They're bordering one another. Mm -hmm. And it's actually hard to tell where the cars belong. I went out there in response to the complaint, and I took a series of pictures and brought them, and it was just a mess. So we're going to make sure that the business properly handles the layout so that these neighbors and visitors can feel that it's being done properly. And I want to acknowledge their complaint and let them know okay. we did Great. take their concerns seriously. Okay, thank you. Lisa. Nothing to No. No. Nope. Nothing. And I'm done. I'll call for a um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're gone.